Ford and GM are having a rough start to 2024. Overpriced trucks and SUVs are just sitting on lots and not selling. The UAW strike slowed down vehicle and parts production for months, and their massive EV programs are starting to fail, losing each company billions of dollars. Ford CEO Jim Farley and GM CEO Mary Barra worked with the government to try and force EVs on American consumers. And now, it's starting to backfire in a huge way. Ford and GM are in big trouble, and their CEOs seem to be in complete denial that anything is actually going wrong. These two American icons went all in on EVs, raised prices on every truck and SUV over the past three years, and let dealers get away with high markups, all while using supply constraints as a seemingly forever ongoing issue. Now, in 2023, it's all starting to crash down in a huge way, and dealerships are already feeling the pain. Ford is predicting they will lose over four and a half billion dollars in 2023 as they lose over thirty six thousand dollars on every EV car or truck they sell. And GM is losing so much money on EVs that they delayed a $7 billion plan to build their new EV trucks until 2025. With the average EV costing nearly $61,000, Americans just can't afford to buy them in this economy. And the authoritarian push by governments to get rid of combustion engines just fuels the fire of declining sales. Trying to force a full EV transition by 2035 is just not set in the reality of the world we live in today. The grid is nowhere close to being ready for an all EV future, and the majority of the American people just don't want them. Most Americans like myself still enjoy our combustion engines and the convenience of just filling up over waiting hours for a full charge. CEO Jim Farley recently tried to go on a road trip in the Ford Lightning, and he got a huge reality check. Charging has been pretty challenging. I stopped at one of the most popular charging uh, sites in the country, a big Tesla um, supercharger network there, and uh, I went to a high, a low speed charger. It took me about 40 minutes to get uh, uh, 40%. It was a really good reality check. EV sales are slowing down, and a combination of high prices and low consumer demand is totally killing the car market. The early adopters of EVs already bought the EV that they wanted, and the rest of us just don't want them. It seems like Toyota is the only brand with some sanity remaining. Toyota is keeping their focus on making the best hybrid vehicles that they can, and waiting a bit longer before throwing their hat in the EV race. Even manufacturers like Tesla are starting to feel the pain. This is a Ford Mustang Mach-E. And while, granted, it is a good-looking car, other than the looks, I hate almost everything about it. So I'm here at the Ford dealership in Rockwell, Texas, and last time I was here, all of this center section back here was entirely empty. They only had a row of vehicles along this edge, on the other side over there, and that edge over there. But this entire center section was completely empty. So it looks like they do have uh, a lot more inventory, but the inventory that I wanna show you specifically for this video is right here and right here. They have a row of Mustang Mach-E's, which is the electrified uh, version of like a, I call it a crossover coupe or whatever. And then of course they have a bunch of Lightnings. And this is the most F-150 Lightnings that I have seen at any dealership. It looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six and then one white one way down there at the end and another mustang maki -E right over here now we've gone over all the reasons why sales are slow on the maki -E, why sales are slow on the lightning um, but while i'm standing here in front of these cars i want to give you my personal reasons why i don't like where some of this electrification is headed and specifically with the mustang maki -E. one you shouldn't have to force change on people and what they're doing with these electric cars is they're completely forcing this change. They're trying to force you to buy these cars when now that the early adopters who bought all the Teslas and some of these other Mach-E's and F-150 Lightnings, like all the early adopters bought those vehicles and a lot of them, especially the Ford Lightning, decided that they hated them and they were terrible, terrible trucks and they were practically useless other than commuting. And with the Mach-E back here, I don't like that they took the Mustang badge and used it as a nameplate to try to sell their electric vehicles. It's a good looking car on its own and they could have sold it as just a Mach-E. They didn't have to ruin the heritage of the Mustang pony car to try and sell an EV and shove it down your throat. And as you can see here, they have four and five just kind of sitting here and what i looked at is the average sticker price of these 
Well, let me show you. This one's around 47. The others didn't have a sticker in the window. They were just sitting on the floorboard, so I can't tell how much the other ones are. But $47,000 gets you in what I can, what looks like a mid-range Ford electric vehicle. But when it comes to these Ford Lightnings, it takes a crap ton more money to get into one of these. And that's a lot of the reasons why the sales are slow. This one right here is $79,000 MSRP. And as I walked down this row, I already walked down this row, every single one of these lightnings behind me were all $79,000. So you have an entire lineup of $80,000 Ford F-150 lightnings that they sold you on the promise that you can use this for towing, you can use this for the job site, but when it came down to it, when the YouTubers and other people started testing it, that was really not the case. It's a terrible, terrible vehicle and a huge failure on the part of Ford. And it's another reason why this EV push is really, really frustrating consumers. Well, I made it to Chevy, and when the GM CEO says that they cut production on EVs, they really meant it, because I see a bunch of Chevy trucks right here. I see some Equinox and Blazers right here, some used trucks here, and there are no EVs in sight, no Chevy Bolts or Volts or whatever you call it. Um, that's really it for uh, Chevy. There's nothing to look at, there's nothing here. Uh, they really did cut production to just about nothing. Now, the only thing that GM does have that they're still selling pretty well, depending on the market and everything, is the Hummer EV. And I didn't find any here, but I think I know one dealership that might have one. So I looked online for Hummer EVs, and there were a few in the area, but most of them were like 45 minutes to an hour away, and it's a little too far for me to drive um, to just go look at it when you've probably seen it before, but they did have one a little bit closer. So there's a new 2023 Hummer EV3X, but it's $115,090. Now that's all assuming that if you go to the dealer, they do sell it at MSRP. Um, but at this point, a lot of these Hummer EVs are kind of sitting around and not selling. So I would think that they would sell it at MSRP. The Hummer EV is a pretty cool looking vehicle. It's one of GM's top of the line EVs that they make. They really don't make that many anyways right now, but they are really, really super cool. Now let's go check out what the competition from non-American companies looks like at Kia and Hyundai. All right, I am at Kia and it looks like they did have a couple of EVs here. They've got this right here. I think this is the Kia EV GT6 or whatever. I might be completely wrong, but no, nope, it's the EV6 uh, GT line. Let's see how much one of these is. Uh, but first, I do want to point out this does look really, really good. It's a really good looking car. And I do think Kia is giving Tesla a run for their money when it comes to the design of these things. And they actually do have more than one. They've got this one here and another black one right here. So let's see how much these are and compare it to like the Mustang Mach-E and Tesla's. This is a 2023 GT line all wheel drive, long range with 20 inch wheels and tires. And if we go down here, it's a little bit rainy today. The MSRP is $59,790. And just for comparison, let's look at this one. This is a 2023 long range. It doesn't have the 20 inch wheel option. The MSRP on this is 55,190. So I'm wondering if that wheel option makes up that four grand difference. So it says the 20 inch wheels are included. It does have dual electric motors included. And this is the second one for 55. And this one does not have the dual electric motors. So it looks like this first one back here has dual electric motors and this one back here is the lower trim level without the dual electric motors and that's where that four grand difference comes from and i heard sometimes they do have five grand markups on these but i do not see it on the sticker um, these are brand new and they look like they just came in so if there is a markup i bet they will tell you when they go inside because i was here at this kia dealership a few months ago because my mom's kia uh was just getting old over 100,000 miles and we came here to buy another Kia and if we bought a new one they were wanting three grand over on like one of the cheaper uh, Kia Seltos or something like that so I'm pretty sure if you went inside that these would be marked up. Now let's go see what the EVs are going for at Hyundai. All right I'm now at Hyundai and behind me they are stacked as far as you can see down this row 
with uh, electric vehicles. These are the Ionic 5s, and they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. And then they have the car that's the Ionic 6. They've got four of them right there. And I actually do think these look pretty good, um, but you can tell that sales have slowed down for Hyundai on their EVs as well because they have quite a few of these just kind of sitting around. Let's go see uh, about how much this is. We'll look at this white one right here. This is a 2023 Ionic 5 all-wheel drive, and the MSRP is $51,270. But with this dealership, there is a little bit of catch. I did not see a markup on a sticker, but they did have some add-ons from the dealer. You've got wheel locks for $195, whatever this connected and protected thing is for almost $1,000 at $995, and window tint for $495. Now, the only option that I do think uh, is good is the window tint because it is nice to have good window tint, especially uh, I'm here in Texas while it's raining because it's like getting close to winter, it's like mid-November, during the summer, uh, window tint does help, but I don't know if $495 uh, is a little bit of an inflated price as to what you would get if you had it done somewhere else. But as you can see, there's a whole row of Ionic 5s, and they all seem to run about the same price. This one here, also $54,575 with a lot of the same options. But let's see how much the Ionic 6, it's like the car, goes for. Pick this one in the middle right here. This is a 2023 Ionic 6 limited long range with 20 inch wheels and it's actually the same price of the suv at 54 320 now this is before any dealer add-ons and let's see what those are going to be we've got the same three things we got window tint connected and protected in uh, wheel locks bringing this to fifty six thousand and five dollars so these are slightly less than what the kia was however the kia and the hyundai are both a lot cheaper than buying one of those four Lightnings and around the same price as buying a Mustang Mach-E. 